and be loved. All right, open your Bibles this morning to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 39, verse 8. I'm sorry, verse 5, not this, so verse 8. Isaiah chapter 39, it's the Old Testament, first prophet in me. These are the prophets here. Isaiah is the first one. It's the biggest prophet, 66 chapters. Second biggest book, Satibo Biblia, after Psalms. Isaiah chapter 39. Isaiah chapter 39, verse 5. Kunana, say amen. Tanamanin do pulil para sa Isaiah 39, verse 5. Pasa verse 5, 6, 7, and 8. English yun up in una, Visaya ikaduha. Yep, I'm going to need that coffee. <sighs> Isaiah 39, verse 5. Then said Isaiah to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then said Hezekiah to Isaiah, Good is the word of the Lord which thou hast spoken. He said, Moreover, for there shall be peace and truth in my days. Isaiah. Unya, me ingon si Isaiah, singa to si Hezekiah. Paminaw sa pulong sa ginoo sa mga panon. Tanawa ang mga adlaw mo abot ng tanan nga ana sa imong balay. O kanang gitagoan sa imong mga amahan hangtod ni ini ni ining adlaw. Pagadat on nga to sa Babylonia. Walay butang nga na mahibilin nagingon ang ginoo. O sa imong lalaki mga anak nga mugawas gikan kanimo nga imong ipanganak ilang pagadad on o sila mahimong mga yuniko sa palasyo sa hari sa Babylonia. Unya, miingon si Hezekiah nga to si Isaiah. Maayo ang pulong sa ginoo nga imong gisulti siya miingon sa dugang kaya dunay kalina o kamatuuran sa akong mga Uh, now, my message this morning is fighting for your kids. Not fighting with your kids, that's different. <laughs> fighting for your kids. What is that? Mag away alang sa mong mga anak? Not makig dilip makig away sa imong mga anak. Lahit na. Fighting for your kids, or proper would be children. I want to talk to you about that this morning. Magawai alang saimon mga anak. Magan po na ta. Nayon kung makalingkod. Now, Father, would you please bless the message this morning? Would you fill me with your spirit? Would you empower me as I preach? Would you help me, God, to say what our people need today? God, you know this message is heavy on my heart. Would you fill me with your spirit as I preach? Would you empower me? God, would you please work this morning? Bless the message. I beg you, Father, meet with us today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Pwede ka mong maglingkod. So kindly delivered by our See if it's still at lava temperature levels. Morag. Morag. Dahil ang tao dere, wala ka balo sa story ng atong gibasa. Just a few minutes ago, this story, as far as I know, is only recorded in Isaiah. I don't think we see. The, do we see the story in the Kings? Basi nasa Kings. But many people don't know this story about Hezekiah. Kings ka balos ngalan Hezekiah. See Hezekiah. Kings to see Hezekiah. What was he? He was a king. Good king or bad king? Good. How many think good? Raise your hand. How many think bad? Raise your hand. All right, the bads lose. All right, and Hezekiah was one of the best kings the southern kingdom of Judah ever had. Let me take a sip of my coffee so I can put it down. Okay.
when my when my brain gets tired, my Visayan gets ugly. Yesterday, my Visayan was ugly in the Libertad. It was not good. I said, "Balik next week, pasi mas mayo sa sunod." Si Ezekiel uban sa pinaka mayo ng mga hari sa tibo kay Visayan sa Judah. Kita mo kita sa description ni Hezekiah. That's the Second Kings chapter eighteen. Turn there with me if you would. Second Kings chapter eighteen, verse five. Second Kings chapter eighteen, verse five. That's in the Biblia. Wala kay Biblia kasi ang kama kasher sa uban. Second Kings, not that age. The books of history, right here. Second Kings. We have Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings. Second Kings chapter eighteen, verse five. Second Kings chapter eighteen, verse five. Kung nanas, amen. Kunana, say amen. There we go. Na na, bright ka ayo. Verse five. He this is talking about Hezekiah. Next story, come on. Hezekiah. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. For he clave to the Lord and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments which the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him. And he prospered whithersoever he went forth, and he rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. Messiah, Sha Misalik the Hasaginu Onga Josa Israel, Ma Onga Human Kania Walai Sama Kania, the Hasatanang Mahari Sajuda, Ni Bison Kings and Nahiuna Kania, Kaisia Mi Nunut. I don't know the word Nunut. Mi Nunut, Nasatanba. In English, it's clay, meaning held tight. Is that what that means? Like how it not like who could put a kusog? Is that the word nunut? I don't know nunut. But I am. Kaisha mi nunut not to sagino o o walat mi bia gikan sa pagsunod kaniya apan mi bantay sa ayang kasugoan ng gisugo sagino ni Moses o gangino o uban kaniya o kaisha mi uswag bisan di in kaisha mi ato o kaisha mi rebelde batok sa hari sa Assyria o walat mi alagad. Kaniya. See, Hezekiah bantugan ng hari. He was a great king. Dahu kayo ang yung gingharian. Naigupa siya sa Dios. Naningkamo chut siya mo palipa sa Dios niya sa mata area sa yung kinabuhi. Pero sa diyan nagduol siya sa katapusan sa yung kinabuhi. He started to get a little careless. Nasabtan yung pulong careless. Wala ay wala na labot delete maampingon careless. And in Isaiah chapter thirty nine, he made a mistake. Nashay sayo. Ang grupo sa mga ambassador magikan sa land of Babylon. Gipadala sa hari kini naguna sa Babylonian captivity. Si Hezekiah Hezekiah naghari siya basin dere sa timeline, and so he was before the Babylonians came and conquered the land of Judah. Pero at niining panahon na ang Babylonians friendly sila ng ato sa gingharian sa Judah. What's that for? That's not our typical funeral sounds. Dali lubong, basin dali sila kanan niya ilubong na. Ah, Santo Nino? What is Santo Nino? I don't know what that is. Oh, statue. They always be make noise for their statutes. All right, somebody go outside. Sumbaga silang tanan paleho. Okay. Anybody want to go watch the parade? No, you stay here and listen to the sermon. Okay, basi masling on parade lang. Oh wait, just a minute. I'm not gonna yell over the parade. I'm gonna drink my coffee while they march by. Behave yourselves. Later, boy. If you do that again, I'll make you come up and do it in front of the camera. Just kidding. All right. Where are we here? At the end of Hezekiah's life, he got a little bit careless. He got a little bit proud. Nagtugo siya ang garbo na salut sa yung kasing kasing and kining ang grupo gikan sa Babylon na kabista niya because Hezekiah had been sick. And so they had to get strong. Just like you know, he came and died. And see, Hezekiah, I got to play. You know, all give give me more time. And God sent Isaiah. He said, "Okay, I'll give you 15 more years." Hezekiah is the only man in the Bible who knew how life long his life was going to be. He knew Kablosh Kablosh, I'm not going to die. I'm going to live for 15 years. God said, "I'll give you 15 more years," and he did. 
I've preached on that before. But after Gi'ayot Nasha, Ayot, we say Nauli Nasha, he got better. Nauli An Nasha, he got he got better. And the king of Babylon heard the news. Anghari says Israel, so gets on up at Nauli An Nasha. So he sent a group of ambassadors to 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 kind of bring him a congratulations. Nalim by Gol Paranimo, and the ambassadors came. And Hezekiah got a little bit proud, and he wanted to show off. Ganan siya magpasika sa iyang bahandi, sa iyang gahom, sa mga nindukbutang, sa iyang gingharian. So when they came to visit, he started showing off. He took them into the palace and he showed them everything, all his riches, his armor, his, 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 his jewels. And nagpakita nila, the Bible says, sa tanan, humanga sila ni uli na balik sa Babylon. As they were leaving, Isaiah came, the prophet, ang prophet ang bagwalik sa Jos na dul ni Hezekiah na kakita sa mga tao gikan sa Babylon. Said kinsa man sila? Sa sila gikan. He said, oh, gikan sa layo ng the pit Babylon man. And he's and Hezekiah and Isaiah na nakulbat na siya. He said, unsa ilang nakita ang diya sa mga balay? And Hezekiah, sino? Tanan ako na kita nila sa tanan. Unsang problema? And then Isaiah says to him what we read in our text. Look at verse 5, Isaiah 39. Go back to Isaiah if you're not there now. Baliknas Isaiah 39 in verse 5. We've caught up to our where we are in the story. Hezekiah said, Verse 5, Isaiah 39, 5. Then said Isaiah to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. Onya may ngon si Isaiah, ngat Isaiah, ngat to ni Hezekiah, paminaw sa pulong sa ginoo sa mga panon. Tanaw ang mga adlaw mo bod ng tanan nga naa sa imong balay o kanang gitago an sa imong mga amahan hangtod ni ining adlaw. Adlawa, sorry. Pagkatat on nga to sa Babylonia, walay butang na mahibilin na gingon ang ginoo. Isaiah said, Hezekiah, karon hunuhuna ka ang Babylonians, ang, ang imong mga higala. Pero pohon-pohon, delik na higala mo. O kung kanak na panahon mo abot, sila mo mahinumdong unsa ilang nakitan karon. They're going to remember how wealthy your kingdom is. Sila may nundum sa gold, sa templo, and gold, and all the jewelry, and all the wealth. They're going to remember. And one day, they're going to come back. They're going to conquer your kingdom and steal everything. Sila, the word in the Bible is spoil. Is that ilog? Sila mag ilog satanan. They're going to conquer. Do you know what that means? you understand what that's saying? He's saying in the future, your kingdom will be conquered and destroyed by Babylon. Pero dili ka na ra. Tanawang verse 7. Look at verse 7. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Og sa imong lalaki mga anak nga mugawas gikan kanimo nga imong ipanganak. Of course, I under, we understand in Visayan, you don't say ang lalaki mag, panga, mag mo, what is it? Mo panganak? Manganak? You don't say that, but that's the only way to translate it in the Bible. The English word is beget or beget. And that word means ang, ang, bulo, ang babae, a woman gives birth, but a man begets. Meaning, kanak ang ba, bahin sa lalaki diha sa Pagkaburos. Can I say it that way? Begetting is the man's part. You understand, it takes a man and a woman to produce a child. Diba? So begetting is the man's part in the childbirth. So they had to, that's translated. It's not wrong. It's just not common in Visayan to say, ang lalaki, manganak. But that's what he's saying. Ang mga anak, nga imong ipanganak, ilang pagadat on uksila mahimong mga yuniko sa palasyo sa hari sa Babylonia. Now watch what he's saying here. Not only is your kingdom going to be conquered, but your children are going to suffer. Ang imong kaliwa. He's not talking about ang imong 
I'm not Jud. He's talking about Makaliwa Sehoma Abba. This didn't happen for a few more, many more years after Hezekiah died. Pero ang kaliwa ni mo. Ang mo anak, mo grandchildren, mo great grandchildren. Sila mo antos. Sila. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Ma, mahi, mm, how do you say it? They'll be taken captive. Magpabini. Mahimong binihagi. Kana. Your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren, your angimong kaliwa, mahimong ma binihag. Dito sa Babylonia. Pohon, pohon. Today, nagpasika siya. One day, there's going to be a price to pay for your pride today. And by the way, that's always true. Ang garbo tut, ang garbo karo na ay bayad sa umaabot. Most of the time today, but certainly in the future. Your future sons will be eunuchs in the court of the king of Babylon. De ang imong anak dili magharit dili sa Jerusalem. Mga bin binihag sila dito sa Babylon. It's bad news. Isaiah was saying, sometime, human sa mong kamatayon, ang tibu ok nasur ok ang tanani mong kaliwa. They'll all be destroyed and captured. Pero tanawa ang tubag ni Hezekiah. Your kids are going to be ruined. Ang imong pamilya, mataod, imong nasur, mataod. Tanawa ang tubag ni Hezekiah. Then said Hezekiah to Isaiah, Good. Is the word of the Lord which thou hast spoken? Unya ming si Hezekiah ngat to si Isaiah maayo ang pulong sa ginoo ng ay mong gisulti maayo. Good. Your kids are going to be destroyed. They'll be slaves in Babylon, and you say good. Matao ang imong pamilya. Good. Maayo. Kanat ba imong attitude? This is a good king. Pero tanaw ang attitude kabayan sa yung mga anak. Kabayan sa yung kaliwat. Sila madaot. Oh, good. Nga naman yung isulti nga good. Look at the rest of the verse. He said, moreover. Siya may ingon sa dugang. He said, moreover. For there shall be peace. For, because. Nga naman malipay siya. For, there shall be peace and truth in my days. Kai adunay kalina o kamatuuran sa akong mga adlaw. Si Isaiah naging ang ang imong mga anak magato. Si Hezekiah nagtubag. Okay na. Basta lang aduna ko ay kalina sa akong kinabuhi. Wag ko ilawat unsay may tabohuman sa akong kamatayon. That's what he said. Diba? Is that what we just heard? That's what we just read. He said, as long as I have peace today, I don't care about the future. I don't care about my kids. You know, dog hung Christian parents, maghimo sa prio na sayo. Basta lang na koy kalina, okay man. That's why we use screens to babysit our children instead of training them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Kanang oras ang gamito na to ang mga screens sa pagtudlo sa atong anak, pagbabysit. Tungod, mas sayon, mas... Come on, must peaceful and balay kung bata magtano sa screen. Pero kinsa ang muantos ang anak nga bumotubo nga walay batasan. What is that? I want peace in my house. So I'm going to do what's easy for me but wrong for you. Hezekiah, your children are going to suffer. Kira, basta lang okay ang akong kinabuhi. Kalina, na ko'y kalina, okay man. One of the best kings to ever live looked at the preacher and said, I don't care what happens to my kids as long as my life is easy. Wak koy labot kung sa magtabo sa ako sa umaabot sa ako ng pamilya sa umaabot sa ako mga kaliwa wak koy labot kabayan niya na basta lam malipay ko sa ako ng kinabuhi. A terrible attitude, shocking attitude from a man who claimed to love God, but at some point his attitude changed. 
It became very hard. Kini ang tao nga naghatag sa iyang kinabuhi sa pagalagat sa Gino. We read it earlier. Pero siya nagtanaw sa iyang mga anak, naging huwag ko ay labong sa mga itabok kaninyo. Basta lang maya kung kinabuhi ka na, raya importante ka na ko. There's a part of me that wants to step into the story. You ever read the story and you want to step in and yell at the person? Yan ang mga sabak kaniya. Oh, dahil mo ibuha! You ever want to do that to people? I want to step in and say, Hezekiah, hello! Did you hear yourself? Nagatulo ba ka sa imong kaulingon? Nagastuli ka ka ba sa umahabot sa imong anak? Nagastuli ka ba sa imong anak? Imong imong maapo, your great grandkids, your great great grandkids. Wa ka ilabot ka ba sa umahabot kanina? Don't you care about your kids? Don't you think your kids' future is worth fighting for? I don't know how to translate that. Wala pa ka nagatuo ng umaabot sa mga anak ang ay ng pakipag away? No, bad grammar. How do you say that? Worth fighting for. Ah, I got it. Dili pa ka nagatuo ng ang umaabot sa mga mga anak No, I don't have it. Ang ay ang pag away? Ang ay ang or ang ay sa? Ang ay ang sa? Pag away? No, that's not right. You all understand what I'm saying. I'm sorry. I can't get it and it bugs me. Somebody teach me after the service, okay? I think we need Sarah. Sarah, I think you're needed. Or maybe Otto was just looking in because she's bored in the nursery. I don't know. This morning, I want to ask our church the same question. I'm not just talking to married people today because every young person will one day be a parent. It's assuming you get married, and of course, we understand maybe. I want to ask you a simple question. Do you believe that your children and their future is worth fighting for? Nagito ba ka na ang ayon kaayo umaabot sa imong pamilya, sa imong mga anak? Ang ayon kaayo sa imong pakikguba, pakikaway? Pag, I don't know how to say that. That doesn't, it doesn't feel good in Visayan. Bisog, that's like kind of like wrestling. That's a word for wrestle, di ba? Pakikbisog? Do you believe your children are worth fighting for? Ang atong mga anak, matagad lao, giyatake sa kalibutan, sa kadautan sa kalibutan, sa kahugawan sa kalibutan, kipalibutan sila sa kahugawan, o kadautan matagad lao sa ilang kinabuhi, and you listen to me, somebody's got to protect our kids or the world's going to get them. Kinaan lang tayo mag-protect sa atong mga mga anak. If we want our children to have a chance to stay clean and pure in a wicked world, if we want our children to have a chance to have a happy life of serving God, somebody's got to decide to fight for their kids. Kung nga ta nga atong anak na i-chance na nga na i-mayong, malipayong, nagkinibuhi ang kinibuhi nga makailangan sa gino, magasunod sa sa plano, sa Diyos para sa ilang kinibuhi kinaan lang ta sa mga kinikanan na maghimo sa decision ako magbisog para sa kumang anak. Somebody's got to fight for them. The world's trying to destroy them. You ever see the stuff they call kids programming on YouTube? On television, oh, pangat pang bahatat ni hukaw manggut. Things they call for kids are pushing the transgender wickedness. Magpalibog sa mga anak kabay na laki o babae o na ikatulo di siya lalaki o babae. That's in cartoon stuff. If you don't believe it, watch what your kids are watching. Landao ang gitan ao sa mga anak. I'm asking today, are you willing to fight for the future of your kids or are you just going to let the world have them? Now let me say right here, there is no guarantee that your children will serve God even if you pray for them and try to train them right, they still have a free will. Well, I can see Guruhan. Today I'm serving God as a pastor. Ang akong pamilya, waluka po okme, waluka eksoon. Ako o uskamang hudlang nagalagat sa ginong tanan lain wala. 
Dahil ano ba nila? Wala, wala nagsimba. Naluwa sila, pero layo ikan sa Diyos. My parents raised all of us the same. Nagtulog na mo sa pulong sa Diyos, nagdalat na mo sa simbahan. There's no guarantee. But you listen to me. If you don't fight for your kids, you will lose them to the world. Kung dalit ka mag-peacehog. I've never used the word peacehog in my life. I know it's in Ephesians chapter 6. Kung dalit ka mag-peacehog para sa iyong anak. Is it mag-peacehog? Makik-peacehog. Makik-peacehog. I said I've never used it before. Learning as we go. Give me 20 years. Kung dalit ka makik-peacehog para sa iyong anak. Mawala. Jud sila. Mimo. I just messed up the grammar again. You're going to lose them. You're going to lose them to the filth of the world. You're going to lose them to the dirty ooyah relationships and teen pregnancies. You're going to lose them to the, the perversion of the LGBTQ. That is the battle of our generation. Our culture tells us you have to accept them. We do not have to accept that which God calls an abomination. Are we going to start accepting murderers too? Are we going to start accepting thieves and drunkards? It's not, don't, don't let the world tell you, well, that's just, they were born that way. Yes, they were born a sinner, but they were not born a confused person. Your sexual orientation is a choice, not something you're given at birth. Sexual orientation is a man-made phrase that has nothing to do with the Word of God. The world's trying to steal your kids. And it's your job, mom and dad, to protect them. Amen. Somebody's got to fight for your kids. Somebody's got to say, hey, once I'm on get done, I'll on phone. I got an even better piece of advice. Somebody else say, you're too young to have a phone. You don't need a phone. Your 10-year-old doesn't need a phone. Oh, but it's easier. Yeah, let's go back to my point earlier. You want peace in your house, don't you? Masayon para nimo kung nashay screen. That's why we give them personal screens. Because it's easier for me. It takes energy to play with my kids. Diba? Kapoiko, biziko. Are you going to fight for your kids? Ang kalibutan, ang yao, naghimo sa... Naghimo kutub sa ilang mahimo. Sa pagkawat sa iyong anak, huwag mo mapahugaw ka nila, huwag mo puno sa ilang kasing-kasing sa kaugawan ng kadautan. Somebody has to stand up and say, it's not happening to my kids. Dilip may ito po sa akwa. This morning I have two very simple points. Number one, if you want to fight for your kids, stay right with God. Kung ganan ka makipiso para sa imong mga anak, ipapiling nga matarong upan sa Diyos. You listen to me. Kung dalit ka mo sunod sa Diyos, imong anak dalit mo sunod sa Diyos. So many parents think my kids will be better than I was. No, they won't. They're going to be what you are and a little worse. Kung dalit ka matarong uban sa Diyos, ang imong anak dalit magmatarong uban sa Diyos. Unsa ni mo pagdahong ay mong mga anak mahimong faithful sa simbahan kung dali ka faithful sa simbahan? Unsa ni mo pagdahong ay mong mga anak mo sa Biblia kung dali ka mo ba sa mong Biblia? Unsa ni mo, unsa ni mo mag, pag, magdahong, pagdahong ay mong mga anak magampo kung dali ka magampo? Dali ka maglakaw ba sa Diyos? Oh, busy go, Pastor. You're too busy if you don't have time to walk with God. Unsa ni mo pagdahong ngay mong mga anak mo tuman sa Diyos kung dali ka mo tuman sa Diyos? Unsa ni mo pagdahong ngay mong mga anak mag, mag, uh, uh, mangita sa pag sa Diyos kung dali ka mangita sa pag sa Diyos? How can you expect your kids to make godly decisions based on the Word of God if you make your decisions based on money, pleasure, and career opportunities? Unsa ni mo pagdahong ngay mong mga anak mo himo sa mga Just nung a decision. Sometimes ikaw maghimo sa mga decision gibase sa korta, kalingawan, o oportunidad sa career. Kung ganang ka ay mong mga anak, mahimong faithful sa simbahan. 
Dia kena kaya mau melanak, mau himu sama tarung, mau himu sa sa, sa pakai tarung kung hantung na. Watch now. If you want your kids to stay right, you have to stay right yourself. You be faithful to church. Amen. I said you. You go. Mau himu faithful. Krabi kaya on kadad han sama Christian ana ita sarasa nga mag absence sa simbahan. Oh, nak kui gamay na sa kids sa ulo. Okay, walk down to the sorry sorry store, buy some Tylenol, and come to church. Now, if you have COVID, you stay home. All right. Pero kung kina kay ubo, oh di ko makasimba. Nangita sa alibay. What do you think you're teaching your children? Unsay mo ano na? Unsay mo giyon ho na? Unsay gitulo ni mo sa mga anak kung mangita ka sa alibay? Unsay mo gitulo sa mga anak kung ikaw mag absence sa simbahan tungo gika puy ka gikan sa paglaba? Sa tungo grammar gumikan sa panglaba. Unsay mo gitulo sa mga anak kung ikaw mag absence sa simbahan tungo nagamay ng sipon? Kung sa'yo mong gitulo sa'yo mong mga anak, kung ikaw mag-absent sa simbahan, tungod na nakilali sa'yo mong pare sa kahapon. That's never happened, has it? Did I say that right, Sakton Grammar? We skipped church because we had a fight last night? That's when you need to go to church. Dali ka ng panahon nga mag-absent sa simbahan, ka ng panahon kinang nakasatabang sa Diyos. In fact, you'd be wise to go talk to the pastor and try to fix the relationship if you need help. Too many, pa too many Christians are ashamed to ask help when they struggle in their marriage. So, ang ilang marriage magsamot ng maulaw sila mga ayos sa tabang sa pastor. What are you teaching your children? Kung sa'yo mong gitulo, sa'yo mong mga anak, kung ikaw mag-absence sa simbahan, tungod, kinalang kong mag-work na sa'yo o masabuntak. I'll tell you what you're teaching them. You're teaching them that church really isn't that important. Kanang tinod bisan unsa baksul bisa mo bakbat ang imong buha nagatulo kanila ng ang simbahan dali importante. Ang tanan lain butang mas importante. Here's here's what we're actually saying to them. Y'all know the song "Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God." Here's what we're actually saying. Seek ye first the kingdom of fun. And of lots of money. And if you have extra time, give it to God. Because he's not that important. Ouch. I even have it in the sign. Pangita ang dakong kalingawan. Huwag ang daghan nga kurtaman O kung adun apay sobrang panahon Ihatag ka na sa ginoo Isn't that what we're teaching our kids? When we say, Delito magsimba ka ron tungod So you're saying, Kini mas importante sa kaysa simbahan And your kids are watching. You listen to me. The elite sila mami na sa imong mga pulong. Kung imong pulong, the elite maguyon sa imong buhat. Oh, importante ka yung simbahan. Pero the elite magsimba karon tungod. Let me tell you why thousands of Baptist kids around the world are growing up. And leaving their church. Thousands of Baptist kids. I'll tell you why. Because for 18 years, their parents taught them that church takes second place to money, fun, and career opportunities. Sila mo biya sa simbahan tungod sa 18 years ay lang kinibuhi ay ang kinikana nagatulo kanila nga ang simbahan ang Diyos. Ma, how do you say, take second place? Magsunod? Ik, mag ikaduha? Or ikaduha? Iko, ikaduha. Ikaduha man sa korta, kalingawan, ug oportunidad sa career. That's why they leave church. That's why they leave God. 
because we teach more through our actions than we teach through our words. I said I have two points tonight, this morning. Number one, if you want to fight for your kids, stay right with God yourself. Number two, and this is so important, listen to me this morning. If you want to fight for your kids, stay married. I papilin nga naminyo. Si Pastor Mike will lie the bush yo dere. Mm, tinood. Pero na daghang was word pagpahibulag. Unsang kaleina. The only difference is the government didn't approve it, but priyong result, a priyong kasakit para sa mga anak. If you want to fight for your kids, you have to stay married. Mark chapter 10, verse 7. I'm going to Mubasa. For this cause, Jesus Christ, I'm going to today. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and cleave to his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. So then, they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore? God hath joined together. Let not man put asunder. Busa unsan gi usa sa jos ayaw itung as a tao pagabulagod. You listen to me. When a husband and a wife are not willing to fight for their marriage, it's their children who pay the price for their selfishness. Sa presyo para sa kadalo sa ilang kinikanan. Sakto ang grammar. Dili, sakto. Dool, dool. Everybody's looking at Pastor Mike. We think we know, you know, we know what you mean. It's the kids who pay. Kung mahibulag ang kami niyon, watch. Kung mahibulag, kung ma ang, ang bana, asawa, magundang sa kami niyon, sakit ang asawa, masakit ang bana, pero ang mga anak ang mag, mag antos labaw sa tanah. I say that right? Sometimes I can't tell if it's nasayo ko, wala ko muna kasabot, or lalo mo dulo, magdali ka ng motubag. It's the children who suffer when mom and dad fight at home. Let me tell you something. Kung nakai disagreement sa imong spouse, hula na maghiskot sa disagreement hangtod ang mga anak na tulog na. Are you listening? Don't fight in front of your kids. Kung magaway ka at ubangan sa iyo mong mga anak, magkawat ka sa ilang kasiguruhan sa kinabuhi. Do you understand that statement? You steal their security. Children's security in life is built on the foundation of their parents' marriage. When you fight in front of your kids, you are, they, you know, the world likes to talk about insecurity. Do you know where insecurity comes from? It comes from children growing up in homes where mom and dad fought all the time. We all have disagreements, but number one, disagreements should be discussed calmly and quietly. And number two, it should never be done in front of the children. If me and mom Ruth have a disagreement, my children never know. Idea. Because if there's something, we wait until it's quiet and the kids are in bed or at school, and then we can discuss it. Well, I sing it. Como sing it, shock and fuck. Just kidding, joke on. My brother says, you know what? It's the children who suffer the loss of their stability and security when they hear their parents threatening to quit on the marriage. Your children should never hear it because you should never say it. Threatening to leave your spouse is the worst thing you can do for your marriage. The foundation of marriage is commitment. O kung ikaw magsulti, ako mo biya kanimo, or dapat ko mo biya kanimo. You are taking 
you are taking one of those jackhammers. You know the jackhammers they use them out on the mountain? You know what I'm talking about? You're taking one of those and you're hitting the foundation of your own marriage. Let me say that in English because I feel like the sign was very bad. Too many Christians are destroying their children's future because they are too selfish and proud to try to save their marriage. And by the way, marriage problems are a result of selfishness. Unwillingness to fix the problem is a result of pride. Can I ask you a question? If you're not willing to fight for the sake of the marriage, are you willing to fight for your marriage for the sake of your kids? Just for the sake of the marriage. Can I say, I'm not perfect. And I make mistakes. But I do know how to have a good marriage. But the problem is, Garboso ta, delika na mo ang kung anay problema. Ayaw mo tulo, ay mong garbo, ay mong kaula, o sa pagpugong ni mo, kikan sa pagkua, sa tabang. Listen now. When you decide to end your marriage, it doesn't just affect you. Kung ikaw mag-decision mo, undang sa kamin niyo ang kanak na decision, dalit mag-picture kanin mo lang. Watch now. You are forcing your children to choose between mom and dad, and that should never happen. Mag-apugos ka ay mong mga anak mo pili, mama or papa. And that should, no child should ever have to make that decision. He is not emotionally ready for that kind of a decision. Song translation. I just happened to see this song. I haven't heard it since high school. This song is about a child. It's a child. It's like a child is singing whose parents just separated him. Kinikana na hibulag na. And he's singing the song, Who Will I Love? Mom or Dad? I translated in Visayan last night. I want you to listen to it. Kinsay hikug maon Kinsay akong pilion Di ko gusto ni ini Kay ako ang mapildi sa kaag I'm sorry, sa kaagikita nagampot sa Diyos ra nga no di nagkakita I'm sorry, I'm not going to say call nga no di nagkita Magaampo alang skugma Kinsay pili on ko Dili masaptan ako Akong tatay ug nanay Wala naghikugma ay Nga nung mabungkat ang pamilya Unsa na hitabot sa gugma Nga no ang gugma o katawa na wala man 
Master Mike, I'm not going to kill my kid. I'm not going to kill my kid. I'm not going to kill my kid. high school, I'm going to kill my kid. My father, my mother, my mother, my mother, my mother, my mother, my mother. My mother, my father, I'm not going to kill my kid. I'm going to kill my kid. I'm going to kill my kid. Tulu ka bata, naglingkod sa kitchen table, o giyang mga, yung mama o papa, nakigawae dito sa basement. Nagsulay magpatay sa usagusa. I've seen it. And it's not fair. And it shouldn't happen to the kids in the Baptist church. Somebody's got to be willing to fight for our kids. Say, Pastor Mike, I'm... Ako nak experience niya na ako mamu papa na hibulag sa diya bata pa ko I'm sorry, sorry ko ka ayo. Naglaon ko nga ako maka makakuha sa imong kasakit. Pero ako ako wala ay gahum para niya na. I will say this. Bisan ni mong makini kanan na sa yop. You can be different in your family. Pwede ka magminyo o magpapili. You can be committed. You can say, in our family, delita maghiskot sa pagpahibulag. We don't even talk about it. We don't say it. It's not an option. We said to have and to hold from this day forward. Ang pagundang dali ang option para nato. Para kamo nga na minyo na, would you decide today, for the sake of my kids, I'll fight for my marriage. We have a disagreement. We'll work through it. Kita magestorya maghis good. We'll find. We'll ask forgiveness and we'll mag mag sorry ta mga ayok pasaylo mo hatag pasaylo ug magpatayon ta pero ang ato nga nakina ham lang kita may gusto sa usa gusto. You listen to me. It's not enough for you to live in the same house. You need to love each other. Your kids need you to love each other. When mom sleeps in one room and dad sleeps in the other, tungod sigi sigi na kiglalis ang imong bata na kabalo. Sila ang muantos. Why don't you decide to fight for your marriage? Why don't you say, God? I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight for my marriage, if only for the sake of my kids. And I don't mean just survive. I mean build a strong marriage. I'll tell you what's sad is when husband and wife stay together until the kids are gone, and then bulagna. They had 18 years, 20 years, 25 years to fix their relationship problems and they never did. Saya. Saya. Well, Pastor, my, my wife makes mistakes. So do you. Ikaw ba ang unang perfectong abana? Ikaw ang unang perfectong asawa? Ah, kung bana, wakar kabalo ang siyang patrato kanako tinood. But I'm sure you are just the perfect princess at home, aren't you? Sweet little Snow White never mistreated anybody. Let's stop blaming other people and decide to do what we're commanded to do. Let's pray and ask God to give us love in our marriages. Give us love for our kids. 
You listen to me. God is the source of love. You can't create it. Did I say that right? Depends on the one loving, not on the one loved. That's God's love. And that's what we need in our marriages. Would you fight for your marriage? Would you fight for your kids? Would you decide to stay right with God so you can protect your kids? You listen to me right here. There is no marriage problem that cannot be solved if we are willing to humble ourselves and seek the help we need. Will I problem us come in your own? At the lip with Masalbaran? Masalbaran? Salbaran. Kung buta, magpabosa tong kabuling og, og mga yos sa tabang nagikinamlan. Any problem can be solved if we'll do it God's way. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed.